This episode is sponsored by 1985 Games with the Deck of Stories, a collection of captivating story hooks live on Kickstarter now. Each hook has probing questions to help you flesh out details and a system to link cards into full story arcs. Whether you're planning a campaign or need a one-shot for your next session, there's a way to use these cards all the time. They've also got an NPC deck with great pictures and traits to make it easy to roleplay NPCs on the go. Check it out. Link here and in the comments and description. High intelligence, Jim, to me, <laughs> mm-hmm. is Stephen fucking Hawking. Okay? Okay, yeah. When you have a whole type of radiation named after you because you just thought, hey, based on these equations and observations, this should happen. And sure, then sure. other scientists go out and go, yep, that's exactly what happened. Mm, Let's name yeah. that after them. Let's like, name that after this guy. That is, that is the epitome of a high intelligence. Whenever, sure. uh, I mean, even Einstein, like we're, we're discovering gravitational waves when he's like, hey, based on my equations, there should be these waves from like all these black holes colliding and stuff. So there should be like cosmic waves that we should be able to detect. And like a hundred yeah, years yeah. later, what? guess what happens? We detect them. And that was sure. just math on a board. I have minored in philosophy and philosophy seems to be one of those academic disciplines that either pisses people off or they just love it. Mm-hmm. It's like, there's very few people that are like, eh, take it or leave it. And what I found was that it was the people who loved it tended to have an ability to make associations between things that didn't otherwise have anything associating them and to like universalize a particular experience so that they could apply that rubric to other things. And like that ability to, to take an idea and mold it and shape it until it becomes a framework for something else or becomes a way that you understand something else or that you were able to make connections with things that otherwise might not have connections to like that's a real hallmark to me of intelligence analysis and deduction it's it's elementary to high intelligence my dear watson sure. like sure. sherlock yeah. holmes is is the essence of another high intelligence character where he's just looking at the spots on you the type of dirt the type of hairs the whatever and can just piece together your entire what you've done for the last three days is yeah. the exact example of that just extrapolation based on a given data set to fill mm-hmm. in the gaps of how you know if a is b then c then d must be this you know uh, yeah yeah okay. and i think that like that that contrasts it with just like knowledge skills because i've known plenty of people in my life who would not describe themselves as particularly intelligent but they are very educated uh, there's a lot of people when i was a ta who who it was perseverance was how they got the way they got. And they acquired a lot of knowledge and a lot of great skills. Um, but just talking to them and, and sitting down with them and, you know, I would not call them clever, not, an, not as yeah. an insult. Um, but so, yeah, I, I think that like contrasting those, it's not necessarily education uh, or knowing things, but like how to apply your cleverness and how mm-hmm. to like make those pattern recognitions and associations pretty high, high intelligence. What does it mean to have a low intelligence, Jim? Like, yeah. What what does that what does that mean for you? You know, going by the sort of general definition that's been throughout DD for a while now, it's sort of mental acuity, uh, your memory, information recall, some of its analytical skill, and like already we're seeing the blend between your character and your player. If you don't remember a thing that happened or a uh, you know, something that's relevant to the situation at hand, then what does it matter if your character has a high intelligence? Like it never enters the game to become a factor to begin with. And so on the one hand, you could you could easily get into the, the territory of like rolling your intelligence for, for the DM giving you hints and, and you know, to see if you remember things. <laughs> um, yeah. A- and then on the other end of just like, yeah, I, I don't even look at my intelligence. It's all me. It's all player skill. And the intelligence is just there for like action resolution. You know, when I think about, you know, mental acuity and memory and analytical skill, I like one that leans towards the player facing side because the low, a low score in this, right? They might be someone that is, you know, might be considered dimwitted or uncritical in their thinking, someone who's really forgetful. And I, that is really ham- that's really going to hamper my ability to play the game. Like mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure that 
I want to put too many shackles or boundaries or things like that on the player's ability to play a character in the game that they're actually in to their satisfaction. And if they choose to further limit themselves, that's one thing. But like saying they have to or they can't like come up with plans or they can't think things through. Uh, those are the kinds of things that, uh, you know, I just I'm, I like to avoid in, this, in, a, in a game. Right. I, I run into this a lot. I think I'm a, a fairly intelligent person. But when I play a character with a low intelligence, what I usually do, uh, um, I, I do the thing where you don't know the names of things. You can either do that, or one way I like to, uh, to role play it is you're just slow. Like, yeah. you'll get there. You just mm -hmm. need time mm -hmm. to think it out, right? You just need time yeah. to mull it over. And so even if you can come up with an answer, just don't say it right away. Uh, yeah. uh, maybe you can say things that would further the rest of the group to help them to get to the answer, right? Even yeah. if you know the answer, um, but maybe y'all come to it a little bit later than you normally yeah. would have. And that is yeah. a way to role play that. They could also, you know, just be uneducated, right? Like in fifth edition, especially intelligence and, and all of your ability scores really represent some kind of innate talent as well as acquired skill. And then the skill specializations come from the proficiencies. So it's like right. got a low intelligence. Maybe they just aren't educated. They haven't trained that up yet. They haven't practiced critical thinking. They haven't practiced any kind of analytical uh, thinking. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I, you know, more than any of the other mental ability scores, I, I like this one should not limit <laughs> the player's ability to make decisions unless they want it to. Go what ahead, sticks Brooke, out for you, Jim, with a high wisdom? Like who, who to you has a high wisdom? My gut instinct is to go with sort of the classic uh, D and D definition of wisdom being a sort of um, quality of the very spiritual and. Mm -hmm. You know, to me, in in this case, someone with a high wisdom is someone who's thoughtful, someone who is able to stay in tune and in and in connection with themselves and the world around them, so that they are at peace with that. So I would see someone with, with a high wisdom as being like what they call very present, right? They're not they're not anxious about something that's happening in the future. They're not overly worried about something that happened in the past. They are in this moment fully completely attentive and engaged mm -hmm. and have with them a, a sense of serenity about that. That doesn't mean they're not ever bombastic or, or, you know, over the top or anything like that. They might be because they have a good mm -hmm. sense of themselves and a good sense of, of their place, uh, in, you know, in things, but it's that connectedness. It's that sense of, I'm not somewhere else. I am mm -hmm. right here and I yeah. am, and I'm fully here. This, this is all of me. I'm giving everything I have to this moment, you know. Obviously, wisdom is that, that thing that you want in your leaders, right? And it's why I love fictional he may be, but Captain America mm. is, to me, a quintessential high wisdom character. He can look into everyone's abilities and figure out how to put them in the right place at the right time based on his, his reading of them and the situation at hand. Yeah. That's high wisdom, right? That's high like wisdom. Knowing yeah, getting him on board knowing... is his highest charisma. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it, I mean, and again, as we all know, Captain America is a, is that character who has like 20s and everything. That's sure, what right. a serum will get you. <laughs> but he is the quintessential high high stat character in every stat. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's what the best he that a human can be. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't exactly. have superpowers. Exactly. He has, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, I really like that um, that example because it does it sort of applies it to to sort of a D and D situation where the, the higher wisdom character is one who like understands the party's strengths and weaknesses and like mm -hmm. understands when it's time to like hold back and consider and understands that sometimes action speed immediacy is important yeah and like yeah. someone who's able to recognize those moments someone who's able to like adapt their way of thinking and way of acting to the specific moment like those are hallmarks of high wisdom they don't always try the same thing same way every time you know right right it's not only how to apply what you have at hand but when to apply it when it comes to low wisdom i to me what i think of is someone who who just uh is barely in control of their own actions in, to an extent, mm. 
but impulsiveness <laughs> is is one of the things like you're not you don't pay attention to the world around you as much like your spatial awareness is a little off maybe so like taking wisdom as sort of a, a mishmash of awareness intuition and insight into the world mm -hmm. your connectedness to it yeah like i see a low wisdom character as just being credulous like just gullible like they'll believe anything they don't they don't verify facts they don't um, you know, they don't think something through, like whatever you tell them right off the bat is, is what they believe. Um, they, they probably have a very deferential attitude towards authority figures. Oh yeah. If you can get them to focus, if you can catch them in a moment where their, their attention and, and mind are, are in, in aligned with what they want to do, then they're fine. Like you'd never know. But then five minutes later, they just, you know, it's like you didn't have a conversation with them. Um, and yet they're like, oh yeah, we did talk about that. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, like the, this is wisdom really to me, maybe even more than intelligence highlights how the ability scores are these lumped together <laughs> concepts that when you really start digging into them, don't, they really start to not make sense. I mean, awareness, I think is a, a main part of wisdom, both your external, yeah. internal and your, uh, your internal into others. The, the inside. Yeah, yeah. Um, you certainly I, don't I like want someone that. with a low wisdom buying a car. Like, certainly so. not. Oh God, no, no, <laughs> no. Both in real life and in the game. Um, yeah, yeah. Let me. I got a like, horse to sell you. <laughs> I, I do like wisdom as a as you know as sort of a stat for your connectedness yeah. with the world around you. Not necessarily with the people around you, but possibly. I, I think that there's overlap with charisma there, but like. Mm -hmm your ability to see the connections between things to sense patterns. And then again, we're talking, stepping on a bit of intelligence's toes, but like to be in tune with, right. And I think that's why it works so well for like druids and clerics to have high wisdom because they're in tune yeah. with this magical world and they're creators of it. Using that definition, someone with low wisdom is maybe they just lack common sense. Like there's just things that you don't do that people, and this person just attempts. Sometimes common sense is is hidebound and and not not really uh, helpful in a situation, and so having someone that's willing to like do something that everybody else is like no, of course we wouldn't try that, and somebody's like, well, I'm I'm curious, I will, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, Leroy Jenkins but it could also get up. them in trouble. Like, yeah, sure, right. <laughs> a, a recent example, I think, of an, an amazing low charisma character is what we do in the shadows. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it. But Colin Robinson, the energy vampire, nobody yeah. wants to be mm -hmm. around him because he's yeah. that guy that when everybody's talking about anything, like, well, you know, the whole reason why that is because and then they go into yeah. a long oh, diatribe yes. and everybody's like, oh, yeah, here we go. yeah. like, yeah, that is yeah, charisma. So for me, charisma, like right off the bat, I the longer I've played D&D, &D, the more I, 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 I do not like the fact that charisma has sort of been reduced to social grace. It's, it's not <laughs> like it's the sooner we can yeah. say charisma has nothing to do with social grace, which is an entirely learned and culturally appropriate or culturally yeah. specific, yeah. Uh, you know, skill. Um, the, the, I think the, we, we can have like an actual conversation about charisma. Empathy is a big thing. And like, not just like the f like faux empathy or, or sort of like faking it, but like an actual understanding of the way in which people are connected, how they relate to each other uh, and, and how you can, navigate those connections so like to me charisma when they say charisma's force of personality i think of that in the most expansive view possible where it's like when this person enters a room regardless of what their personality type is like regardless of if they're optimistic bubbly outgoing introverted whatever they fill up the room they be yeah. they somehow become a center of attention they somehow draw people towards them they somehow they have they have kind of a personal magnetism that is not necessarily born out of what they do as opposed to just sort of how they comport themselves. You know, that we yeah. might say that they're magnetic uh, or something, you know? Yeah. Robin Williams had a 20 charisma. Yeah. I think, yeah. But I, 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 you know. I would say so. Yeah. There's not every actor that would like, I think there's a lot of actors who probably have low charismas and they're relying on skill more than that personal yeah, magnetism. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, I see what you mean by that. Yeah, I mean, he, he, like he was a force of nature. Like, if you talk to anybody, like they're like, mm -hmm. "Oh, when Robin Wing enters the room, everybody knows." 
you know, this is where we're going to get into the, in quotes, they have it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually people factor. with high charismas have that it factor. It doesn't matter what they yeah. do for a living, whether it's sports yeah. or they just write or they're scientists like Neil deGrasse Tyson has that it factor. Like yeah. to me, that is charisma. And so yeah. low charisma, I mean, you should be like a, like a, like an anti black hole of attention. Like, <laughs> it just, as you walk in, people just start walking out the back door. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like that. Bad first impressions, uh, you know, mm -hmm. someone with like really low self-esteem or low empathy or just like a low opinion of themselves. Right. Like to me, the hallmarks of someone with a low charisma are they're stubborn. They're inconsiderate. They just seem to put people off. And then they might also just be hesitant. It could just be a case of like someone with low charisma is just someone who doesn't volunteer to go first for anything. Even if they know the answer to something, even if they know what, what something, you know, something sh should be done about a problem or whatever, the answer, they might not speak up. You know, they might wait to be called on or just not say anything unless somebody approaches them sort of in private. Um, mm -hmm. And I think like it's, it's in thinking of the, of the low, what a low charisma looks like that I gain a better picture of what a high charisma looks like, because I find charisma really difficult to define what does it's no longer tied to appearance really should not like be tied to social grace or, or manners or anything. Um, but it's someone yeah, that has confidence in themselves, you know? Yeah. Go anyone ahead. can go to what, what is it? Emily post, like an Emily post school, <laughs> like etiquette or whatever. And you can learn social grace, but like yeah. charisma is, is that guy, is that person that comes in the room and when you introduce, they constantly like, how, hello, I'm Peter. Hey, how's it going, Paul? But like you constantly like remember everyone's name wrong uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> or or things like that. Like you don't put it upon yourself to remember the things that people tell you and you make sure that yeah. they know that um, yeah. by constantly regurgitating wrong information. Like this just goes into like a lack of empathy, um, but uh, it, it is a way to put people off like that. That's how I would is, play yeah. a low charisma character. It's you never remember yeah. anyone's name right. Uh, that's yeah. always the caveat uh, the, here. Yeah, maybe they were raised in a cult and they don't have worldly knowledge because they were told a completely different way of being. <laughs> not, not saying that from any personal experience or anything, but maybe that's why. Maybe that's why they right. think that when it rains, that's God crying for all the sin in the world. I don't know. Sure. You know, who knows who, I mean, yeah. Who would think something like that? Um, yeah. Who would tell their child that?